What's up, people? You have found the Kale Report. I'm Scott Killian. I'm going to go ahead and give you a spoiler. Today's review is a KO, at least in my opinion, and that's what this whole channel is about, Killian's opinion. Everybody else, including the manufacturer of this product that I'm going to talk about today, did not fall in love with it, thought it fell flat. Maybe they know more than I do, but for me, this product is KO, and I'm going to let you know more about my 2016 Victory Magnum and why I fell in love with it and why I chose to purchase a product that has been discontinued now for almost eight years. Stick around. <laughs> about a Victory Magnum. Victory Motorcycles was an American-made motorcycle company, yeah, someone besides Harley-Davidson, that came about in 1998 with a heavy motorcycle that was called the V92. They later came out with a sports cruiser and then, uh, let's see, a touring cruiser, all kind of off the same platform. Then in 2003, they came out with a Vegas. It was a little more of a, a longer rake style with a cool front wheel and just something that unique. The V92 kind of blended in with almost a Suzuki Boulevard slash M109. It was kind of a combo between those. Later, it came out with the Vegas 8-ball, the high ball, and then finally the Gunner, which in my opinion was a direct target to the uh, 883 Sportster with Harley-Davidson. The most popular brand or the model for them by far was the, uh, the Victory uh, Cross Country Cruiser, or like I'm calling the XCTs. Uh, they also had a Victory Vision, which was their top of the line bike, but honestly, it had such arrow shaped lines to it that it almost resembled a spaceship more than it did a motorcycle. And I've actually been told by one of my buddies that, uh, uh, asked me if I had a space license for, for my bike. Uh, but m later on down the line, uh, they did come out with the um, Magnum and it was toward the end. They came out with this in 2015, 16, 17, and in 17, January 9th, uh, 2017, Polaris, which owned the company, uh, Victory, and produced it, uh, said they were pulling the plug on the Victory line to focus more on the Indian line. They had bought the name Indian and resurrected it uh, in the motorcycle industry. Now, for me, the Indians look more like an old man bike. The, the real fun, fat uh, fenders that wrap all the way around, got the Indian head on there as an emblem. Um, to me, they're just... I'm almost 50 and they still seem like an old man motorcycle. And to many, I'm an old man. Ask any of my kids. Uh, but the, the bike that I've got, uh, originally what caught my eye with these was a Zach Ness edition. Uh, Zach Ness is the son of Arlen Ness, who's more popular, also has a son called Corey Ness, and they did custom uh, editions of these bikes, and a Zach Ness edition really caught my eye. I'm going to try to put up a picture of it now. Uh, the cross countries more or less took my attention, and I test drove one that was a used bike at a uh, local dealership in uh, Hickory, North Carolina, and fell in love with it. I was like, I will have one of these. Uh, a couple of years passed, I think that was 2015 or six, uh, that was 15. In 2017, I actually, they came out with the uh, Victory Magnum uh, X1. And when that bike came out, I was having it, period. No question. So I contacted um, the closest, larger Victory uh, dealership that was near me, which is in Merle's Inlet, South Carolina. And they had three in stock, one on the showroom and two in uh, crates still with two more coming. But these were limited edition numbered items. And I just knew that this was the bike I wanted. And I absolutely fell in love with it. Applied for financing, got approved on a Wednesday. <laughs> 
it's cold weather. I'm in the mountains of North Carolina. Uh, and that weekend I was going to go down and drive it back. I didn't care how cold it was. I bundle up and, and roll. I don't have a trailer. I could have probably rented something with you all, uh, but I would rather have moved it in an enclosed trailer. Uh, but of course, new bike, you want to, you want to ride it. So I got approved on financing. Uh, the weekend came by and it was a monsoon of weather. I called them on Saturday. I said, look, I can't get down there. Uh, I think I even called them on Friday and said, look, with the weather they're calling out for, I don't know that I'll get down there. They said they can't hold the bike. I understand completely. And I, I, they asked me if I wanted to put a deposit down of $1,500 to hold the bike. And I'm like, no, I don't want to wire any money over the, over the line. Uh, I will just you've got you still got three this is friday you still got three yes and two more coming okay i will be there as soon as i can the following monday is when polaris announced that they were pulling the plug on the victory brand but would still be supporting it with accessories uh the sell through of accessories that they had in stock at their dealerships and uh, warehouses and continuing to produce parts for them for up to 10 years which is another I think four years now after I now own this bike. So that's the only thing that's a little scary, but luckily there's aftermarket people like uh, witchdoctors.com and Victory Only uh, that really have a surplus of inventory of parts. And uh, so far I've not been able to find anything for this bike that I've not really looked for. Uh, I have already put on floorboards on it, which I will show you. Uh, they are Victory uh floorboards i do have uh, a couple of things here to go on it that's a clutch uh an easy clutch pull that is uh hot vic so it's it's sort of aftermarket um i got these offline which i thought was really neat it is some fillers on the engine uh there's a four millimeter four millimeter head allen screw in this hole and as you screw it down this little stopper kind of pushes down and these wings will cut, uh, these should turn around. These wings will sort of sit in between the piston heads and fit in there to give it a nice look. And I'll do a video as I'm putting each of these accessories on. Uh, they should be shorter videos. I did get uh, a couple of other things. Um, heard some people com uh, comment about the exhaust or the heat coming off the engine being extremely hot. Um, so far we've had a few warm spells where I live, but on the weekends it either is raining or 60 degrees. So I did buy these heat shields that I'm going to put on, uh, there to kind of reflect the heat away from your upper legs, inner thigh area. Ooh. A couple of other things I've got here is a screw on gas cap. The one that's on there now is a flip top. You got to have a key. So, uh, I'm going to take this off and change it. I bought a foam mount, which is not Victory. They're kind of universal. Also, uh, this was really cool. This is going to match my floorboards. They look just like this. And this is your brake and shifter levers. So I've got these to put on. This was a, a bit of a, they call them a unicorn to find this. Um, when I was at Tennessee, I stopped at Victory Only's warehouse and they had this in black, uh, but not chrome and said that it was, would be very hard to find and taking their word on it, I just assumed it would be. And sure enough, I got on Facebook Marketplace and found somebody with one, that particular one, new in the box and I was like, I'll take it. I didn't say pretty much name your price, but how much do you want for it? Awesome, let's go. And got it shipped in. Um, I've of course, bought a matching helmet. It's not a Victory helmet, but I did buy a matching helmet uh, as my old helmet was a black gloss helmet. And you'll see my bike here in a moment. It is a flat white paint scheme. So why Victory? The question should be, why not? This is the only bike. Motorcycles have always caught my eye and I've had a few along the years. I started off with a, a Suzuki uh, 250 that I had actually repoed from a guy who owed me money when I had my Snap-on franchise. Um, I moved up to a Honda Shadow Arrow, which was a, a, a classy looking bike. And I really liked the bike, a lot about the bike that I liked. It was just uh, underpowered for a full grown adult. Uh, moved from it to a, a Yamaha 
um, V Star. I want to move to a V Star um, 950, then an 1100, and then finally a, a Yamaha Stratoliner, which was a massive bike. Uh, the biggest bike I had had to date until this one. This bike is the same engine size, about 1743 or 103 cubic inches, six speed transmission. This is the first bike I've ever had that has a fairing. So I've got a stereo, I've got speedometers and fuel tanks and check engine lights, uh, all of that, that uh, I've never had on a bike before, at least not in a gauge in front of you. Maybe be on the tank or a small cluster behind a windscreen or windshield. Uh, so really excited about this. I would call it my first big boy bike. We do uh, rides at our church, or we used to do a lot of rides at our church. And one of the coolest things, one of the reasons I, uh, that got me back into wanting a motorcycle after selling my others, my daughter's high school, uh, West Wilkes High School, has a a really cool opening series where they do the national anthem or before the national anthem uh, and the music's playing, uh, the crowds come in, you hear these motorcycles fire up, but you can't really see them. They're behind a clubhouse. And they come out and circle around the track of the football. have a cheerleader or a dance squad member on the back and then they kind of come in on the field and they line up facing one another and as they do uh, the cheer team gets off and they pull the banner across and the football team runs through it uh, while the motorcycles are revving up their engines. My daughter, who's now in high school, the first year I saw her ride on the back of someone else's bike, her freshman year is a homecoming game, I looked at my wife and I'm like, that's not going to happen again. And then her sophomore year, she was on a bike and my wife looked at me and she says, get one for next year because she's going to be a junior and, you know, this could be, you know, something you guys can share together. Uh, so I started looking, she goes, let's get through the holidays though. So I started looking in January of this year, uh, shopping around and, and this particular bike, uh, usually with tw mid twenties to 30,000 mile range runs around 15 to $17,000. Then you got some people are just stupid out there at 19 and $20,000, which is what they sold for new. Um, they think they have a collector's item. That's not the case. Uh, I found this one uh, very near home, 45 minutes away. I found this one very close to home for under $11,000. So I was like, sweet. When I showed it to my wife, she's like, absolutely. That's the best deal that you've shown me. Sorry about that. So I went up and uh, it was in Mount Airy, North Carolina, which is also known as Mayberry. But I went up and I asked for the guy who I uh, communicated with online on Saturday when I saw it. And he says, I am a dealership, but we are here Monday. We're closed already today on Saturday. We're not open on Sundays. I was there Monday morning at 930. And I'm like, I want to see this Victory Motorcycle. They uh, told me it was in the shop, that they hadn't even brought it into the sales floor yet. So I went out and looked at it and I had my helmet in my hand. I said, can I go for a test drive? It was funny, they told me that they don't allow test drives. And I thought, well, for what you're selling this for, it I could probably resell it and get my money back and maybe even make a couple of thousand dollars according to everything that's online. So I uh, went ahead and done the paperwork on it, uh, signed everything, and then I was able to go for my first drive on it. Uh, oddly enough, that was a day that I was flying out to Dallas for a week with work. So I drove around Mount Airy up to the Virginia border back and said, listen, if you would put it on a battery charger, I will be back in a week to pick it up. And they're like, you're not taking it home? And I'm like, not today. Uh, so uh, we worked that out and I've been able to bring the bike back home and ride it a few times with the weather that has permitted me to. And folks, I absolutely love it. It's, it's heavy. Uh, but going down the road, going down the road, it's very comfortable. It's very stable. It's uh, very well centered and balanced. You sit low on the seat. If I had anything to complain about this bike, is that when you're turning it, it has such a turning radius that I almost and you sit so far back that I almost feel like my arms are like this, and it's hard to maybe gauge the clutch or if you're going this way to uh, to work the throttle properly in real sh uh, sharp cornering. Uh, luckily, you don't have to do that too much unless it's slow maneuvering. And I have noticed myself a time or two 
accidentally hit that front brake and you will stop it will nosedive on you and you're you're praying don't lay over don't lay over don't lay over and you wheel it back up but man that will uh that'll make you pucker up for sure so enough about the chit chat enough about the chatter let's go look at the bike so why victory i'll tell you why the majority of it is on that fairing i love the sharp points the crisp lines that comes inside it, it needs a bath i just got back from a ride the magnum comes with an led headlight a larger front wheel 21 inches with a wraparound fender this is standard on the magnum come and look the line on the tank that is not a dent that is the lines to kind of match the lines in the fairing and i love the way the pinstriping and the decals just flow down the tank the black comes in with the seat and then goes down to the hard bags i have installed on this bike already the uh the victory floorboards i bought these used it's hard to find any victory accessories some other things i plan to change will be the dipstick make it chrome it does have this is another something that's different from the magnum to the cross country is these are called tombstones and on the cross country they have cheese wedges uh, or wedges is what they'll call them but they look like a wedge of swiss cheese i like the fairing being the same color good looking dash this is a blade style windshield the cross country does have a taller windshield i'm looking to maybe change this out it does have a little bit of a flip up here but there's a windshield from a company called clockworks that uh gives it a little bit more lip has a little less buffeting buffing One piece, it's considered a unicorn, but if anyone's watching and has it, it's a chrome piece that goes across here to kind of match this. It was made by Kiriak and would love to uh, have that. One of the accessories I showed you downstairs is fillers for this area where the plugs are. I'm going to put those in soon. I may put in a back. Uh, there's a facing here that kind of goes across that and blocks that out. I'm not sure yet. I may or may not get the factory or some um, rear, replace the pegs with floorboards. From the picture, I did have a backrest and a luggage rack on it. I just took that off for the ride today. But you can see the hard bags, plenty of storage inside. I do want to get some fillers to go in between the saddlebags and the fender. I think that looks really good at least some for the lowers because i will have i need to leave the upper free so i can put the backrest on and off easily i do have vance and hines exhaust on it that was on the bike when i bought it i did buy this used but to me this bike is just incredibly sexy and they turn my head i always look check out motorcycles going down the road but it never fails that when i'm looking at one and to me it's a head turner it is always a victory I'll let you hear how this thing sounds turn the radio down so we don't get any copyright and Accessory here I have downstairs is the, uh, the new fuel cap. I don't, I'm not a fan of the lock, uh, so I'm going to change that soon. I'll eventually get a chrome piece for here. The bike does come standard with cruise control. 
first bike I've ever had with that. Also, your radio controls are here, turn signals. So tell me, what do you think about the Victory? What bike do you ride? Why do you pick? Why did you pick the bike you picked? Now, for me, it, it, this to me is just a good-looking bike. I do hate the fact that Polaris ceased production on it and put their focus on an Indian. I'm almost 50 at the recording of this, but I still look at an Indian and think, God dang, that's an old man's motorcycle. And some people think that the that this is an old man's bike, but to me. I've reached the level of bike I want. I couldn't be more happy to be the owner of it. And I just will continue to put miles on it for years to come. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a blessed day. Once again, I'm Scott Killian with the KO Report. You take care.